If you are a fan of John Mayer, then you've probably been tuning into his new Sirius XM radio channel called Life with John Mayer. And one of the many great things about John's new channel is that he is doing what he calls live rewinds. This is where he takes an entire show from his past, all of the audio being professionally recorded, and then just uploads it to the channel for us to listen to in its entirety. And these are just random concerts that John's uploading as well. So they've obviously been recording the audio professionally from a lot of his shows in the past. And the very first one that we've got for the live rewind is Madison Square Garden Night 2 on July 26th of 2019. And a lot of you guys will be familiar with this specific show because it was the first of two performances during the 2019 World Tour that John would perform Continuum front to back in its entirety during the second set of the evening. When this show was going on, everyone online was losing their minds. Getting to hear Continuum front to back was absolutely crazy and something totally unexpected to get from John, something that us fans could only dream of. So the fact that we have this entire night, all of the audio professionally recorded for us to listen to, is truly amazing and I'm super thankful that John has done this channel for things like this. So I thought this would be the perfect time to make a video going over all of the gear that John used for Madison Square Garden Night 2 on July 26th, this exact performance, to go along with all of the professionally recorded audio. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break it up into kind of four main sections here. We're going to go over the pedal board that John used for this show first, then we're going to go over his amplifier rig, then the guitars, all of the guitars he used throughout the entire set list, and then at the very end, we're going to highlight a few of the performances from this evening and discuss the tones and break down some of the things John was doing gear wise. So sit back and relax and I hope you guys enjoy the full breakdown of all the gear that John used for Madison Square Garden Night 2, also known as the very first Continuum Night. All right, on your screen right now, I'm going to throw up a shot of John's pedalboard from the very end of the North American leg of the 2019 World Tour. And just the way it goes is that the most dead-on, high-resolution shot of John's pedalboard from this tour that we have is one where he just decided to take off the Klon Centaur in favor of just the solo Dallas Storm. Throughout the 2019 World Tour, John was experimenting with different pedals, throwing them on and off his board. During the North American leg specifically, John was experimenting with the solo Dallas Storm and the Klon Centaur on the pedal board at the same time, or just having one of them on. This was just the one show where the Klon Centaur was actually taken off entirely in favor of just the solo dial storm but the storm was kind of in the mix here and there as well so for the sake of this video and breaking down his pedal board for madison square garden i'm going to just overlay a clon center over top of where the solo dial storm sits so we're going to run through the board in its entirety kind of as briefly as i can make it before moving on to john's amp rig so the very first pedal on the board is a keely true bypass looper labeled psych loop now this actually brought in an effect in a rack unit off stage and this was the Shin Ai Companion Psychedelic Amplifier Machine and this was the fuzz circuit that John was using for I guess I just feel like so that's what this was doing it was pulling in that really crazy vintage unit and bringing in that fuzz tone before everything else on the board then we move on to the electric tuner which is a TC Electronics Polytune 3 then you have a Keely Katana version 1 Moving along, we have the exotic XW1 wah pedal, then the Origin Effects slide rig. Moving on next, where the Solo Dallas Storm sat on this specific board, would be John's blacked out Klon Centaur, but it is just a Klon Centaur in a different enclosure. Then we have the Ibanez TS10, followed by the Mesa Boogie Flux 5, and then the Boss OC3, rounding out that kind of first section of the pedal board. On the second row of the pedal board, we have an Electro Harmonics Qtron Plus, followed by a New Neighbor Slate labeled Reverberation. This is what John used for the reverb for Love on the Weekend. Then we have the J-Rocket Mr. Moto, followed by the Strymon Flint, then the Providence Delay 80s, and then that very last pedal with a photo of Leslie Nielsen on it was just a remote switcher for a Leslie, which, as far as I'm aware, just brought in a Leslie, probably a 122 off stage, and just turned it on or off. And that's that second row of John's pedal board. Then we move up to the back row, and there is a TC Electronics Polytune 3 Mini labeled Acoustics, just John's acoustic tuner on the pedal board, followed by a way huge Aquapus AP 
version Mark 1. Then we have a Chase Bliss Audio Warped Vinyl Hi-Fi. Then another Kili Katana version 1. And this Kili Katana was in the effects loop of the Qtron Plus. You can actually see the Qtron Plus has both inputs and outputs for the effects loop taken up. And that's what the Kili Katana version 1 on the back row was for. Then we have the Providence Chrono Delay followed by the New Neighbor Inspire Chorus, and then finally finishing off with the JHS Kirkland Signature Double Booster for that kind of final boost on the pedal board. Okay, now we're going to discuss the amp rig that John used for this performance. And during the 2019 World Tour, John stuck with a three amp setup. All the amplifiers were always on working together. The very first amp was the PRS JMOD John Mayer signature. The middle amplifier was a two rock John Mayer signature. And then the last amplifier was a Dumble Steel String Singer, either 002 or 004. Both of them were used throughout the entire tour. But for Madison Square Garden, John elected not to use either Dumble Steel String Singer, instead using his original Sterling Signature 2-Rock amplifier. Now this was truly special because the 2-Rock Sterling Signature was an amplifier that John was using all the way back since the John Mayer Trio era as kind of his original Steel String Singer Dumble amplifier. And of course, this amp's kind of claim to fame as far as John Mayer fans are concerned is it being used on Where the Light Is and during the Continuum Tour, even though John already owned one of his Steel String Singers at the time. So this amplifier, even though it's doing the Steel String Singer thing, it still kind of brings you back to those original Continuum era tones and the fact that John just chose to use this amplifier instead of either original Steel String Singer is just extremely cool. I've done a full video talking just about this very thing so I'm not going to touch on it too much in detail here but the fact that we got the original 2-Rock that John used for the Steel String Singer sound back in the Continuum era for one of the Continuum nights is just rather fitting and it's just one of those things where John knew majority of people in the crowd aren't going to know what I'm doing, but for those who do and recognize this, it's going to be just that extra special for them and for all of us JM Gear fans, obviously, this was a very special thing to see bringing back that original Sterling Signature 2 Rock. As far as the speakers are concerned, the 212 cabinets were loaded with Celestion G1265s and the middle cabinet was loaded with an EV. Now, while the amp rig would appear that the 2-Rock is what is going into the 112, it was actually the JMOD amplifier that was being ran into the middle 112 cabinet and the 2-Rock John Mayer signature was actually being ran into the 212 that the JMOD sat on. So that's just one other thing to keep in mind as far as the amp rig was concerned. It's just because the JMOD head is whole wider obviously so it just looks better having it set up that way but the 2-Rock was what was actually being ran into that 212 cabinet the JMOD into the 112. All right, now we are going to go over the guitars that John used for this performance. And because we have the entire thing in professionally recorded audio, I want to run through the entire set list and what guitar we are hearing for each song. I'm not gonna to touch on all the guitars in a lot of detail because if I did, we'd be here for a few hours at least. So the evening starts off and opens with Heartbreak Warfare and John uses his custom shop, Charvel San Dimas. This is one of my favorite guitars of John's that he's added to his arsenal in recent years. It's loaded with Eddie Van Halen Wolfgang pickups and of course comes with that Floyd Rose and whatever John picks up this or his Jackson SL1 soloist. We just get a different kind of version of John. The Floyd Rose really brings out a lot more Jeff back in John and the version of Heartbreak Warfare that we started getting from the 2019 World Tour is really special because of guitars like the Chevelle San Dimas. Up next is Love on the Weekend, and we get one of John's prototype Silver Skies known as the All White Silver Sky. This is because the guitar is finished in a white finish, and the neck and headstock also are finished in this white color as well. This guitar was a prototype that John was testing around this time in the, kind of the mid-range of the North American leg of the 2019 World Tour. He used it for a few shows, and then he actually ended up giving it to Isaiah Sharkey, who we actually saw using this guitar during the promotional performances of the Sob Rock album for Last Train Home, Shot in the Dark, um, for, for at least one of those performances I remember off the top of my 
head he was actually using that guitar still. So great to know that Isaiah Sharkey has that guitar still. Now the All White Silver Sky, we kind of initially were theorizing that maybe this was an SE Silver Sky prototype, but as we know, the SE Silver Skies took a few more years from the time of the 2019 Roller Tour. So I just suspect that this was maybe John just experimenting with a different finish on the Silver Sky and then they just never ended up going with it. For a changing, John would stick with the all white Silver Sky prototype and then up next is moving on and getting over. And for moving on and getting over, John used the same guitar that he used in the studio to record the song, that being his 1977 Gibson L5. Now this guitar's claim to fame was actually the Mulholland Drive kind of performance that John did where he was talking, overlaid with him looping with a Line 60 L4 above Mulholland Drive on the DVD Where the Light Is. That's where most of you will know this guitar from and just really great to have this guitar on the professionally recorded audio again because it's what he used for moving on and getting over in the studio. Up next we have a couple acoustic performances, the very first one being Waiting on the Day where John was using his Martin OM28JM followed by No Such Thing which was the Martin D45 and then we have Who Says where John went back to the Martin OM28JM. Up next we have Rosie where John was using that all white silver sky prototype followed by Edge of Desire which requires a humbucking guitar and John used his PRS McCarty 594 in that beautiful all silver platinum finish. It's one of the prettiest examples of a McCarty 594 that I've seen just the all silver finish with the matching headstock is just gorgeous. Now the final song of the very first set is In the Blood and again John was using that Martin D45. That concludes the very first set and a lot of people at this time had no idea what they were in for with the treat of John performing Continuum front to back for the second set. Okay, now for the second set, Continuum front to back. Of course, we start off with Waiting on the World to Change, John using the all-white Silver Sky prototype. He used the same guitar for I Don't Trust Myself with Loving You as well. Up next, we move on to Gravity, and this is something we're going to touch on in a little bit in more detail, but John used the black one for Gravity. Then we have Heart of Life, and this song is an E-flat, and during the 2019 World Tour, John's E-flat guitar was one of his mock sand silver skies, this one being finished in satin, I believe. Next, we have Vultures, which again was the all-white silver sky prototype. Following that, we have Stop This Train, John bringing back out the OM28JM, and then we have Slow Dancing in a Burning Room, and again, we're going to touch on this as well in a little bit, but we got John's 1964 Stratocaster used for Slow Dancing in a Burning Room on this recording, which is amazing. Up next, Bold as Love, again, another E-flat song, so we see that mock sand silver sky that set up an E-flat get brought out again. Again, then we have Dreaming with a Broken Heart where the silver McCarty 594 comes back out as well. Then we have In Repair going back to the all white Silver Sky prototype. Finishing off the second set with I'm Going to Find Another You. Again, having the Gibson L5, just like where the light is for this song as well. Now we're going to move on to the encore and for the encore, we had the same guitar used for both songs that John would perform in the encore. And this is another prototype Silver Sky, this time with a maple fretboard. And John had actually said that at this point in time when he was road testing a prototype of the maple fretboard Silver Sky, that the main kind of thing they were testing out was the actual neck shape. And they were still trying to nail down the exact neck shape that they were going to use for the production versions of the maple board Silver Skies. John saying that the best way for him to test out something like that is just to take it on the road with him and play different prototypes to find out the one he liked the best. And of course, for the encore, we have Still Feel Like Your Man and New Light, both using that guitar. That rounds out all of the guitars that you hear for that entire performance. I just thought that was the best way to go about it because I'm sure a lot of you guys like me will be listening to the professional recorded audio just, you know, always now going back and just knowing what guitar John used for each performance just makes it that much more special, I think. Now let's get into a bit of a tonal discussion and some highlights of the performance that I wanted to touch on before we conclude today's video. The very first tone I'd like to highlight with you all is the solo for Waiting on the World to Change. When you hear it in the professionally recorded audio, the repeats of the delay that John uses for the solo 
it's just very noticeable and delays are something that sometimes gets lost in the mix. And then I went back and watched some of the footage you're seeing on your screen right now of the solo and even just from the audience footage, you can't actually hear the delays, but it's just a lot clearer in that professionally recorded audio obviously. Now, in watching different footage of the solo, John steps on the TS-10 and the Klon Centaur for the solo, but for the delay, he steps on the Providence Delay 80s. Now, we don't have a clear shot of him stepping on it, but based on where the Delay 80s sits on his board and where he steps at the beginning of the solo and then turning it off at the very end of the song, it just has to be the Providence Delay 80s. There's no other delay near where he's stepping. So that would be what we are hearing there. And just something really cool that when you listen to that professional recorded audio, it's like, wow, there's a lot of delay actually going on. But the Delay 80s being my favorite delay I've at least ever tried out. The way it just sits in the mix is, is very beautiful. This ain't living, this ain't living. The next tone I'd like to highlight is actually the one that John opened with being Heartbreak Warfare with John's custom shop Charvel San Dimas. In the professional recorded audio, again, you just really hear how powerful those Eddie Van Halen Wolfgang pickups are and also how prominent the Floyd Rose actually is. This is another thing that when John performed Heartbreak Warfare with this guitar, I feel like in a lot of the just fan shot footage we have, you don't really get the full effect of that Floyd Rose being used for the fluttering of Heartbreak Warfare, but hearing it like this, it just gives at least me a new appreciation for John choosing to kind of do Heartbreak Warfare in this new format with a bit of a departure from the way he originally would perform it live with the Jeff Beck Stratocaster and the Rodulent Adrenaline, instead just opting for, let's just go all power, big humbucking pickups, and a Floyd Rose. And I really love this kind of new style version of Heartbreak Warfare. The next tone I'd like to go over is Belief, and it's a really great example of some of the higher gain overdrive solo tones John was going for during the 2019 World Tour as a whole. And that's one of my favorite things about the 2019 World Tour is we got a little bit more higher gain overdrive solos from John that we just weren't really used to hearing, and different pedals like the Mesa Boogie Flux 5 were a huge component of that sound. Now for the 2019 World Tour, general performances of Belief, what John was doing is he was leaving on the Keeley Katana for the entire performance of the song just to boost the cleans a little bit, make them a little bit more louder. And then for the solos like the intro, the middle, and then the outro solo, John was stacking the Mesa Boogie Flux 5 and the Ibanez TS-10. And you just get this higher gain overdrive sound that you don't get when John would stack just the Klon Centaur into the TS-10. But instead, TS-10 into Mesa Boogie Flux 5 gives you just this completely different sound. <laughs>
Now, one thing I want to highlight that John would generally do during at least the North American leg of the 2019 World Tour is that after the main solo of Belief concludes, he would turn off the Mesa Boogie Flux 5. However, he would leave the Ibanez TS-10 on for the final chorus, then restacking it with the Mesa Boogie Flux 5 for the outro solo. Now, one last thing that's special about this specific performance is that John also uses the exotic XW1 Wah pedal for the outro solo of Belief. The exotic wah on his pedal board wasn't used for one specific thing throughout the tour. It was just on there, so he had a wah pedal to use whenever he kind of felt like using it. And for this performance, he did just that. The next tone that I want to discuss just has to do with gravity and slow dancing overall. You guys can probably guess where I'm going with this. And it's the fact that John used strats for these two songs on this performance. Of course, the black one being used for gravity and the 64 being used for slow dancing in a burning room. The fact that we have the professionally recorded audio for a night where John used both of these guitars for those songs is actually kind of a lucky thing to be honest because John didn't use the 64 and the black one religiously for gravity and slow dancing the burning room. He would use the silver sky quite a lot for those songs as well but we got both of them on the same show which is just truly special and that might have something to do with him again calling back to the tones and the studio recordings actually too of the continuum sound overall. Both of those guitars having such a you know big impact on the sound of Continuum. Of course, Slow Dancing the Burning Room being recorded with the 64 Sunburst Strat and then the black one being just in general, the sound of Continuum. So we get both of those guitars for those two songs and the black one, just a couple shows later, John would actually stop using that guitar entirely and then we wouldn't see it again until 2023 here at the time of me making this video where he brought it out for that one crazy performance of Gravity during the solo tour. So we got kind of lucky because Continuum Night 2 that John did in Los Angeles, we never got the black one for that performance at all. We got a Silver Sky instead. And the Silver Sky doesn't sound bad by any means, but there's just this undeniable thing, this almost mojo to the black one in the 64 that when John plays those guitars for Gravity and Slow Dancing to Burning Room, you just get this sweeter sound that comes from the strats and then the way he plays on those guitars seems just to me at least and i'm sure some of you guys as well just a little bit differently and it just makes it extra special that when we listen to that recording we are hearing the 64 and the black one and that's just amazing <laughs>
Thank you. Honestly, just hearing Continuum front to back, it just wouldn't feel the same. It almost wouldn't feel right not hearing the black one and the 64 Strat, both of those guitars, at least once. It just, it just is so great that we got both of those guitars for the recording. Now, the very last tone I want to touch on is In Repair. And the performances that we get of In Repair during the 2019 World Tour as well are some of my favorite performances during that tour as well. And mainly it's because of John's kind of slight tweak to the tone of In Repair and it's his use of chorus. Now for In Repair, John would use the Chase Bliss Audio Warped Vinyl Hi-Fi to provide that really beautiful chorus that you can hear very clearly during the opening of the song. And it's just that slight adjustment to it, I think just sounds really great. And In Repair is one of my favorite songs off of Continuum as well. So this is just another tone that I wanted to highlight and something different that John did during the 2019 World Tour when it comes to the tone of that song. Concludes the gear breakdown and some tone analysis from the very first live rewind being Madison Square Garden night two on July 26, 2019. Also just known as the Madison Square Garden Continuum Night. I just thought something like this would be really great to pair with that very first live rewind that we got from John. If you guys did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. It actually took a lot to make this video and I'm sure it's not going to be very short. And if you guys want me to do the same thing for other live rewinds that we're getting in the future, please let me know. And if you guys like the video, I'm sure that uh, I can probably make that happen for you all. Go and check out Life with John Mayer on Sirius XM if it's available in your region. I know it's only available in Canada and the US as far as I'm aware, but if you can and haven't already, please go and check it out. It's really awesome and I've been listening to it quite a lot. Just even hearing John talking to fans on the phone lines has been really interesting and stuff like that. So it's just really cool and always great to support John as well. So please go and check it out if you can. Until the next time, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Take care. And we'll see you on the next one. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.